Well, Yanni's obviously talked about uh, you know creating the apps, and uh, now you want to get them out into users' hands so that they can experience the fruits of your labor. Um, as Yanni mentioned, I'm Gordon Thornton. I work in the store support team out in Vancouver, Canada, and we are primarily here to help developers and publishers resolve any issues they might have with getting their applications live in our store. Um, so here is just an overview of what we're going to go over. As you're all aware, you know when you're making any product for any platform, you want to be aware of what the uh, guidelines and uh, sort of restrictions are for the store and all the various territories you want to do. So we're just going to go over the uh, preparation phase and how to you know, better plan ahead early on in your coding cycle so you don't have to go back and rewrite code that you might have built other code on top of, which you know, could be costly in time and resources. Then we're just going to go over the basics, screen by screen, step by step, how to actually get your cute app published to the store successfully. And then I'm just going to give you an idea of what happens behind the scenes, the magic of what we do to your app to finally get it live. So we do have the new uh, portal available. I think it went live around spring. So hopefully you guys have checked it out, developer.nokia.com. Um, this houses a lot of good uh, documentation on all the platforms uh, we support. So you just hit the resources, documentation, you'll get taken to a screen like this. When you first get to the screen, there will be a big wall of documents there, but there will be a drop down list to the right where you can select the specific platform. In this case, I've selected Qt documentation. And uh, yeah, it's a good place to go to just to be aware of, you know, what you need to do to package your apps correctly and uh, any sort of tips and helps and tricks you might have. Another uh, good uh, resource at the site is uh, guidelines more appropriate to the store itself. So if you hit the distribute tab, getting published, you'll get taken to a screen like this. And uh, there's a lot of uh, documents that really help you, you know, once again, better plan and prepare your apps for the, uh, the store submission. So this guide here is the publisher guide. And it will go over all the various metadata requirements that the store might have for your app. So, you know, what are the, uh, the, the art file sizes you need to be aware of, what metadata fields you need to be putting in there, uh, and uh, just various restrictions and guidelines, once again, for the store. Next is the content guidelines. Very, very important you guys go over this document. These are essentially the test cases, the actual test cases the certification team will apply to your software. So it goes over you know, how you need to handle orientation correctly, um, telephony type issues. So once again, if you have applied these test cases to your app and you're confident that everything's good, then there should be no surprises once you submit the app to the QA team. Because once again, this is the exact test cases they will apply to your software. Next is the uh, top failures. This is just you know, another supplement to the other docs which give you uh, what are our top 10 failures in the store right now. Um, they do cover all platforms, so not all of them will be appropriate to Qt or applicable, but there are you know, a few in there that are applicable to Qt, such as packaging your app correctly with the right UID, using the right smart installer, so forth and so on. And lastly, there's another document just to outline how to you know, further package your app correctly if you want to take advantage of our in-app update functionality in the store. What this is, is uh, if you release your application and you want to do an update a couple weeks or months later and you want to publish that to the store, following these packaging uh, rules will enable your, the store client to notify users of your app that there's a newer version available and to go ahead and download that. Right, so hopefully you guys gone over all the planning and preparation and you've set up your project correctly. You've now finished developing your application and now you want to submit it to the store. Um, before I get on this, I just want to give you a brief high level of how the store is currently set up in terms of you know, the process flow and steps in terms of getting your uh, items uploaded. So just like a brick and mortar retail outlet, you will have to uh, 
if you're looking to release a product in a brick and mortar retail, uh, mortar retail, you will need to obviously have packaging that your product then sits inside, and then you need to tell you know, people where to go and ship your product to. So the store is much the same way. When you first log in, you need to create a package for your app, and this is the metadata phase. And then once you've done that, you've essentially created your packaging in the store that will then house your application inside, and that will be the uploading the file uh, stage. And then once you've done that, we'll be wrapping up with the final phase of uh, pretty much telling the store what it can do with your app, what countries it can go to, what devices, what language it selects, so that people on the store, you know, based on which territory or language they're uh, using, they get apps appropriate to them. So you need to first create an account. Um, you go to www.publish.ov.com register, it's a fairly easy uh, process. Once you've done that, simply log in and then you'll get taken to a screen that looks much like this. You press the content tab and select new content item, at which point this menu will appear where you need to select which platform your application is for. Um, in this case, it would be a Qt application. Then you get uh, this screen here, which just gives you three quick questions. Is there encryption in your app? Do you have the legal rights to distribute this content? And have you tested the, uh, the application against the store guidelines, the, the test cases I was talking about earlier? Once you've done that, you head to the metadata phase. And as mentioned, this is to create the packaging that will essentially house the application, the packaging in the store. Um, the first field you need to fill out is the name of the item. This is not seen by users, so don't worry about you know, them seeing this particular field. This field is here specifically to you, for you to help manage all your various content items in the store where you might have a QT version, a Qt version of your app, and uh, you might need to have a Java version of that application as well to service you know, different device um, setups, lower S40 devices or whatnot. So, this is here to help you manage you know, your various products in, in, in the published system. The next metadata field is the display name. This is seen by the users. Um, if any of you have seen the store client or navigated so several mobile stores, it's very similar. You'll have a list of applications, an icon, and then the name of the app. And then when you click it, you get taken to a detailed screen where the user gets you know, more information about that uh, application. So once again, this display name, this is what the user will see. So Next is the description. As mentioned, when the user is browsing the store, they find something that is interest, and they'll press the, uh, that item. They'll then get taken to a detail screen, which obviously will have this description text. This is sort of you know, one of your primary first touch points with the user to help sell your app, describe what it does, and really entice them to download it. So, you know, try and make the speak as uh, snappy as possible. Uh, one thing we do recommend if uh, your app is larger than 10 megabytes, please, you know, recommend they use Wi-Fi. Nothing's uh, worse than paying 99 cents or 199 for an app, and then you get carrier charges of $20 afterwards. So it'd be good to just, you know, give them some heads up on that. Next item you need to fill out is the category. This essentially tells a store you know, what type of app it is. It also helps users out in that they might go to the store with an idea of what type of app, but they don't know a specific name of an app or a brand that they're looking for. They just have an idea of what flavor they want, at which point they'll press the search button, get presented a list. Do you want an application, a video, a game? If they press application, they'll get, then get presented this, uh, this list here are various different categories. Is it an entertainment app? Is it a video application? Is it an education application? Newspapers, so forth, so on. So it's good to pick the, uh, the category that obviously is relevant to your app to help filter it through based on user searches. Once you've done that, you'll scroll down and you'll hit to the categorization tags. You need to put at least one here and a maximum of three. If you do not put any here, your item will fail, and then you'll have to resubmit afterwards. These, uh, these fields are just further to help uh, filter content out to the users based on their previous history in the store, um, and so forth and so on. Next is the keywords. So much like the categorization tag, 
users might go to the store and not know exactly what the name of the app or you know a specific app they're looking for. They have an idea of what type of app they're looking for, and they, but they might just put the uh, touch the search field and then enter text. So if they're looking for say a Netflix type app, they might type you know video streaming. If you have those keywords in your keywords field, that will then uh, the store will then filter your item in that list. So one thing we do uh, one, to make sure you guys are aware of is do not use brand names in this keywords field. If the uh, moderation crew see brand names, they will fail your item, and then you'll have to you know potentially lose a day or two in your submission process, having to go back in and get rid of those brand names. Once you've done that, you tell the store how much you want to sell the app for. So it's a simple drop-down text box. You just drop it down, select one euro, two euro, three euro, so forth, so on. If you want to know what uh, that price point means in the different territories, <coughs> there will be a billing matrix text there. Just select that. It'll open up a spreadsheet and tell you exactly what does one euro mean in, say, India or China, Australia, so forth, so on. Next, you need to provide support information. These need to be a valid support uh, website and email address where users and customers of your application can reach out to you with any problems they might have, um, issues they're running into. We've also found you know, several users, they, they do use this uh, to give you guys feature enhancements and ideas on how to you know, make your app better. So it's, you know, it's very good to have this information here. Um, these uh, support addresses are displayed once again just below the description text so when the user is navigating the store and they see an item of interest they'll click it get taken to a detail screen for your application um, the support text is listed in that screen right so once you've uh, filled out all those fields you just need to upload some imagery all boxes look good if you have like pictures on there so uh, the first image you need to upload is the icon. This is displayed once again in a, uh, the app list when the user is browsing a list of apps. It will be your app icon with your app name, at which point if they're interested, they'll click it, get taken to the details screen. The icon needs to be square, 256 by 256, no smaller than that, and no larger by 2000 by 2000. It is also recommended that the, uh, the app icon you're using in the actual OS should match the icon that you're using for this metadata field as well. So be aware of that too. You also need to upload at least one screenshot of the application. And once again, this screenshot needs to be a direct representation of your application. It can't be slightly different at all. What uh, the moderation crew, they'll go and double check to make sure that the screenshot and the application match. So we have had instances where people have a screenshot and it clearly looks a lot better than the application. Uh, one other thing, uh, if you are uploading an N9, cute, cute build for N9, the, uh, the screenshot is a different orientation. So for S3, Symbian 3 devices, the screenshot needs to be square. For Migo, it's the Migo's uh, orientation size, screen size. So once you've uploaded and entered all that field, you have effectively created the box. You are done. You can then go and move into uploading the file. Before I go into that step, though, I just want to uh, bring some extra attention to some of the marketing and spotlight opportunities we have for your applications. So if you have uploaded an app and it's generating you know, pretty good, modest downloads in certain territories or global, Nokia might take it upon themselves to nominate it to be part of our spotlighting program. Um, if any of you guys have been to our store, you can see when you get to the store, there's, you know, the landing page might have a big banner of some product, and when you get to other uh, items in the store, you know there's there's screen space in the experience to you know highlight certain applications and promote them. So, if you don't have this uh, metadata, these images in your file, we obviously cannot promote your app at all. So here's a cool tool we do have. If if you don't have you know an art resource available or no one ready to uh, create some of these cool looking spotlight banners. We do have this tool here that allows you, it's really simple to use. Just go to that website and uh, if your item's published, you can simply just cut and paste the store link into the, uh, the field here and it will just pull the metadata from the backend system 
and use it to create some of these uh, template type images. So once again, it's really uh, you know, here to help you guys uh, easily create these items, get them in the store so that you guys can capitalize on our promotion uh, channels. So I'm just going to give you an idea where you uh, upload these items. This is, once again, in the metadata screen. So you'll see the support addresses and the images we've put in here. Um, here you have the spotlight banner. This is for the PC store browsing experience. It's a fairly large banner. It's a 967 by 277 banner. And uh, yeah, we also have the banners for the uh, mobile store client navigation as well. And these are square images, 111 by 111 and uh, 74 by 74. So, you know, you've created all the, uh, the packaging items for your, uh, your, your, uh, your application. Now you just need to upload it to the, uh, the store. So after you've created the, uh, the metadata, you'll get presented to a screen like this. You can select the uh, upload file text or the content file tab. Both do this exact same thing. They'll take you to the exact same screen, which would be this screen. So here is where you're going to upload your Qt application to the store. Here we have the, uh, the content file name. This is similar to the other item where it's not viewed by the end user. This is simply here to help you manage the items in your accounts. Uh, a use case might be you have a Qt application of your product and you need to maybe only support a specific language for a specific territory or Maybe you have a, a, a cute application and you want to release it to some sensitive countries, so you need to tailor some of the content within it. It's a, you know, that's what this field is here for, in case you need to upload different versions of the same product to service different distribution territories. Um, what you don't want to do is create a separate packaging for each sort of version of your file because then that becomes harder for promotion uh, aspects. You then need to promote multiple store URLs versus just one store link. So obviously it becomes a lot simpler to just promote one link that people can go to and then you let the store determine which file needs to be delivered to their handset. Once you've named it, hit the browse button. You'll get presented with a very familiar you know, environment, open file type box. Just find the file you, uh, you want to upload to the store and Select upload. Um, be aware if your file is fairly large, 10 megabytes in size, the uploading can take a while, so don't feel like it's frozen or anything. Just give it some time. So once you've uploaded the file, you will need to uh, put in the metadata field what UID you are using. Um, some of you guys might have gone to Symbian Sign to get your application signed, or you have Express signed accounts. That's great your app is signed, at which point you will need to put uh, what UID you are using in here. Alternatively, you can, uh, we also have a, uh, we will sign the app on your behalf. It's called Request Nokia Signing. And uh, if, you're, if you're a registered publisher in the system, you can email the developer.support at nokia.com and request UIDs, at which point they will send you five UIDs for you to manage on, on your own. Pick one UID for your application, use that UID, put it in the package file, and then compile and submit it to the store. One thing I just want to kind of point out quick is this address here. This is uh, the support address you can use to reach us. We're here to service publishers, developers. You know, if you have items, questions with the store, questions with packaging your app, any technical issues at all with you know, just getting your item live in our store, feel free to uh, contact us. And as, as mentioned, if you want to you know, take advantage of our signing service, select the uh, request Nokia signing. And once you've done that, you have effectively uploaded the file correctly to the system, and you select Upload and Continue. So now your file and your packaging has been created. Everything's great. All you need to do now is tell the store where it can actually distribute your content to. So we're going to head to the distribution phase. These screens will appear right after you've selected that upload and continue at the file upload. The first 
item you need to fill out is which devices your application will run on. If you do not have at least one device marked as fully tested, our team will fail it and you will have to resubmit with having one of these devices marked as fully tested. So once again, you know, be sure you've tested the, uh, the application on one, at least one target device and you've tested against the content guidelines and made sure everything works correctly. If you're confident with that, feel free to put the fully tested on that target device. You can also put, uh, if you're not sure if it works on other devices in the same family, you can put assume to work. If our team uh, spot checks it and it does work, then awesome, it'll get released for those other devices as well. And you don't need to do any extra testing at, and spend your time on that. So once you've uh, you know, selected the devices your acute application supports, hit next, and you'll get taken to which countries you can uh, release this application in. Um, there are scenarios where you might only have you know, legal rights to distribute content in certain territories. If anyone's in the music business, I'm, I'm sure you're aware of that. Um, alternatively, you might have legal rights to distribute your content globally, but country store governance and our guidelines might not let certain content go to certain countries. So it's good to be aware of this when you're in the upload phase, because if you have a application that has potentially maybe a lot of imagery of people in bikinis or showing a lot of skin, your app won't be uh, able to be released in uh, you know, some of the Middle Eastern territories and whatnot. So in this screen, if you have those territories uh, identified and then our team decides, oh, well, you cannot release this content there, it'll be another failure point requiring you to have to resubmit. If you're not sure what these countries are, you can go to that uh, URL. The, uh, this information is also uh, at the developer portal as well that I showed earlier under the uh, distribute uh, content guidelines tab. You go there and it'll just give you the list of some of these suspect territories. One thing I do, I do a lot of the uploading for our first party applications and for time sensitive items that, you know, which is generally all the items I'm doing. Um, I generally, unless we're specifically targeting these territories, I will just exclude them for the initial release just to avoid any risk and complications. And then once I'm confident and the item's published, I can easily just go back in, re-enable these territories and <coughs> hope the item gets through and they let it go through. So once you've assigned the countries for your application, you just need to go to the last step, which is what languages your app supports. Fortunately, if your app supports English, then you can just select all the languages. Your app can go to any language uh, device, any device set to any language. Alternatively, if your app doesn't support English, only supports you know, other languages, you will have to go through here and hand select which specific language your app does uh, support. So once again, if there's any discrepancies there, it will be caught in our moderation phase and the app will uh, fail. So you've... Uh, Create the packaging, upload the file, you determine the distribution, you're done, you save it. The next point is uh, once you've saved it, this is another common failure point. People feel they've saved it, they're, they're done. No, you still have to press the, uh, the submit button. So <laughs> <laughs> don't forget about the submit button. After you've submitted it, you will get presented with a, uh, a pop-up where you know, you're done. If you feel like you, you, know, you have nothing else to upload, that's it, you've, you've effectively done your part. Alternatively, as I mentioned, you might want to upload another version of the same application for different distribution settings or countries, at which point you can just select add another file. It'll just take you to the, uh, the file upload uh, path of that, uh, that content item where you can just add another file with distribution settings and keep doing that until you know, you've effectively uploaded all products for this, uh, for this item in the store. One last point I just want to uh, talk about before we get to the final phase, which is you know, what we do with your application, is there is this help text on the, uh, the right side for all the fields. So if you're ever unsure, feel free to refer to that. Alternatively, if that's not helping you out, <coughs> the super email address right here, this is what uh, our job is. We will. Uh, definitely help you out with any questions and concerns you might have. Right, so you've uploaded it, you've done your, uh, your bit. Just want to give you an idea of you know, what we do behind the scenes to uh, effectively process your content correctly. As you can see, this is a four-step process. 
the signing team, effectively receive your content file, make sure you've packaged it correctly, you're using the right UIDs. If they're happy with it, they'll then move it over to the moderation team who then just spot check you know, all the metadata fields, the imagery you're using, making sure that the images and the text you're using isn't suspect at all. Um, or it's not, you know, it's not adhering to some of the country guidelines. So if you're using you know, a, a screenshot of someone in a bikini, then and trying to release your app to certain MEA territories, the moderation crew will pick down up on that. And then the certification group, those are the testers that will apply the uh, the test cases. At which point, if those three groups are happy, it'll go to the publishing phase. So as mentioned, here's just a graph of what the the signing team kind of operates. I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but uh, effectively, if you're uh, registered or you're in the process of registering, that's fine. You can then request UIDs once you're a registered publisher from that email uh, developer.support at nokia.com. Package your app correctly, and then you submit it. The signing team will, once again, just make sure that you've packaged it right with the right UID and your UID is valid and it's a protected range UID. They will then uh, dev sign it for our moderation and QA, their specific IMEI, so they can then install your application before it's production signed. Once they've passed it, it then goes back to our signing group who will production sign your application and then send it back to them for a quick spot check, making sure that signing didn't break any functionality at all. Once that's done, it'll publish. So yeah, after it's gone to the uh, signing team, they will sign it for the moderation IMEI devices. And these guys will go through all your metadata, making sure the screenshots you know, adhere to country governance. Also making sure the screenshot of your app matches your application and just you know, making sure that everything's intact there. And here's just an example of some of the suspect images. So if you've got anything along these lines, definitely exclude these territories. So once the moderation is happy with uh, you know, the content, and the imagery in your, uh, in your app and your metadata, it will then get passed on to the, the testing team. So as mentioned, these guys will only test your application against those guidelines, the Nokia store guidelines that I mentioned earlier. So you know, if you're confident that your app meets and adheres to all those guidelines, there should be no problems here. Um, one other thing I do want to just point out too is uh, these guys are working 24 hours a day, but that's only five business days a week. They're not working weekends. so. If you have time-sensitive content and you need to get it out on Wednesday or Thursday, please don't upload it on Friday. <laughs> Try to definitely be aware of this time delay here. And so once you know all those groups are happy with it, it will go to the publishing group. And we're publishing roughly about 3,000 items a day. And uh, the export windows are about every four, four hours a day. Oh, the five business days, just one, uh, one last point there. If uh, you have submitted your item and uh, it's not live in five days, chances are there was a problem. I do recommend, once you have submitted your item, to periodically check it every day so you can log into your system. We do have uh, reports that will notify you at which stage in the, in the process your application is in. So log into the store, click the item that you've submitted, you scroll to the bottom of the page and you'll get to see all the different comments and quotes from all the various teams that have uh, touched on your app. And you'll be able to see, you know, has it failed or is it still going through the process? So it's really good to, you know, be aware of these items for time sensitive content so you can react faster. So that's pretty much it, pretty basic. I don't know if you guys have any uh, questions at all. Where do I get the screenshots from? You said they must exactly match what uh, is on the phone. <laughs> yeah, there's a good app on the store called ScreenSnap. So you can download that. And uh, should I repeat the question? Yeah. yeah. Well, I said, where, where do I get the exact screenshots from? Yeah, we do have an application in the store called ScreenSnap. Um, actually, I think it's called Best ScreenSnap. You can do a search for that. It's for Symbian 3 devices. Simply run that app in the background. You can select which button you want to use. I, 
I assign it to the camera button. And then you just run your application and then just push that camera button and it'll take screenshots of your application. I'm not aware of a screenshot capture tool for the N9 yet, so there might be one. I'm actually, I just don't know if there's one there. It's called screenshot. It is called screenshot? There is one up? Okay, excellent, thanks. Any other questions? Thank you.